Hey, it's the Chief from Bonding with Board Games. This huge, extra large pizza box with Universe on it is a self-published dexterity game from, and I always gotta look, dialtostra.com. Dialtostra.com. We're gonna go in, I'm gonna show you a closer look of it. It looks great, but I'll show you in a second. And then we'll come back and I, I'll give you more of my thoughts after we come back. All right, we're looking at the box that the universe comes in, or universe comes in. It's a self-published game um, from designer uh, Stiggy Vanderskeen. So you can you can find it on BGG. It's ranked. Uh, he's a new user. Um, he contacted me and asked if I would like to review it. Now I've reviewed enough games that I knew coming from self-publishers. You never quite know what you're going to get, but it looks. The board looks great, and I'm gonna show you that, but even the presentation of it is nice. So just my hands can get a size, this or an idea of the size. This is like a uh, an extra large pizza box. Uh, we've got the logo in here, and when I opened it, I was very pleasantly surprised. You can tell this is a labor of love. So the first thing is, you can see that there's like a, a black felt that's been put down inside the box and it really gives for a nice presentation. Um, the rules, uh, just a regular sheet of paper, but they've been laminated and I'll go over those in a second, which you'll see. Let me set these off to the side so, because uh, I'm getting a lot of glare from the lamination. So presentation is great. You get a bag, uh, it's gonna come with um, your game pieces, which when you're playing, you are going to be, it's a dexterity game. It's a dexterity space game, which had my interest because I love dexterity games. I love when I have big groups over for like a board game night, I'll have a dexterity game out on the table and people just gravitate to it. You know, a flicking game is what this is and they just work great to get a party started and visually stunning. I know I'm getting a little bit of glare. Let me see if I can, oh boy, almost worse. Let me adjust some of my lighting, hold on. All right, we're looking a little better. So you can see um, when he showed me a screenshot and said, hey, you know, Chief, would you like to review this? It's a self-published game. Yes, um, I just love the look of it. The design, the graphic design is great. Uh, when you're playing, you're gonna be using, these are called ships, and you're gonna be using all of them um, to flick or roll or bounce or move around on the board. And I'm gonna show you that in a second. Let me show you another surprise from the board. So when I go to lift the board out, I thought, well, okay, this is interesting. And then found out that it's, it's even bigger. So I'm gonna get the box out of the way, but you can see we've got this whole nice box thing going on, by the way, uh, their website, if you do wanna order. That's also the, uh, the username is, I don't know how you say it, Dial Tostra, Delet, Delet Tostra, I don't know. Kind of a cool card though, I love the whole art design. Like I said, clearly someone I think has either a gift for art or um, they've actually been to even some art design schools. All right, so again, we're still looking at this cool shape, but it opens up all the way. Let me get everything smoothed out. And you've got a pretty big playing surface. These are your launch bays that everybody's gonna be launching from. And you can kind of see, let me lift up, there are clear marbles. I know I'm getting glare, but there are clear mar marbles that have been glued on very nicely to each of these planets and these octagons, which are like a, they're a bonus space, which we'll talk about in a little bit. And it just looks nice. And you can see, again, for the board, you've got double-sided, but it's got these little almost like grooves in it from the corrugation. And uh, those actually come in handy with the marble, which I'm gonna show you. So everything, um, right off the bat, I was really surprised with production value. Um, you can tell, labor love. Let me set up so you can see how a player turn would go. All of these pieces are considered your ships. 
and you're going to be flicking them or rolling them or dropping them or whatever you're wanting wanting to do to get them onto this board space. Um, like almost any flicking game, you're going to take your turn in order. So red would go, and I wouldn't have all of these on here, but maybe I decide, okay, I'm going to roll my marble, and I'll show you how this works in a second, or maybe I'm going to flip the disc. And I would flip my disc, and it's going to shoot out onto the playing field. Now, in order to score, I've got to get past these front planets, but if it bounces back, they'll count as scoring. Now, how I'm going to win, let me zoom out, you win... You play a set number of rounds, they suggest maybe 10. And you're gonna score each round. So everybody's going to flick their three ships. I'll do one, red will do one, or blue will do one, green one, blue run, back to me, I'll do my next one. And just like tumbling dice or crokinole or anything else, you can be defensive. So I could flick something to knock somebody out of a space, try to move their marble, whatever. But your goal is at the end of, let's just say, 10 rounds, it'll be the person with the most points wins. And the way you get points are when you flick. So I come in and I flick this out and it shoots across the board and it lands way out over here. I'm going to zoom in so you can see it. And oddly enough, this will be one of the problems. You've got to have it at least halfway on a planet. That actually looks like it's splitting the difference almost perfectly. Let's say it's more than halfway on. The problem is that's a minus 15. So that is going to actually minus my score. If I would have been over here, it would have been plus 15. And I'm gonna just slowly pan around some of these other little areas. Again, the artwork is um, really phenomenal. I mean, they're gorgeous. So you can see you got plus five You've got minus 15, plus 5, plus 25. This little shape here, what is it, octagon? It's actually like, uh, well, it's, it's a bonus space. If you get your piece, whatever piece it is in there, you're going to get a bonus round, and I'm going to come back to that in a second. But let me zoom out just a touch, and I'm going to show you the artwork on these planets. And you can see these are just clear marbles that have been attached, but they give... I don't know, like a crystal ball glowing factor that's really nice. And I really, really, no, it's a really, so I'll say really, really, really like the look of these planets. Oh, hey, and here's our black hole. Uh, you do not want to end with one of your pieces in the black hole. If it's in the black hole, you're not going to have it for the next round of flicking. So I would only have my disc and my marble in this case. But I wanted to show you a very good look at all these planets. And you can get that visual feel and you can see the marbles on them. Now let me get everything reset here. And I'm going to talk about... As we come in and look at a flicking space, I'm gonna talk a little bit about some of the problem for me with this design in terms of a dexterity game. There are so many marbles on here. Every planet, every square has a marble that there, there's just, it's hard to actually maneuver. It's hard to be defensive and go knock somebody out. There's just not enough room to maneuver on the board uh, for gameplay. So when I flick in, I'm hitting stuff and I'm, and I'm just, I have a difficult time maneuvering on the board, which makes it hard to be defensive. Second, when the disc is very controllable, all right, like flicking any disc, and it's a wooden disc that's been painted, the marble is chaotic and you can't really control it at all. If I roll it in, it just kind of, careens around and I've seen it even just catch a groove and kind of float around and it just is hard and difficult to control. It's a marble and that's problem two with the ship. Again, if there were less things bouncing off of, maybe I could work a back spin or a side spin. This black hole in the middle is not depressed so it's not like crokinole where you got a hole in the middle where things can trap or stick. And then we're going to come to the last deal. Now, again, let's say I got my marble on this space here. It's a plus 15. So if it stays there, I'm going to get 15 points. If it was over here, it'd be minus 15. 
Let's say I launched my disk, and this one's minus 20, but this one's plus 20. Let's just say I got the minus 20. So right off the bat here, I'm looking at a minus 35. And they're so very close to each other that when you're kind of shooting in an area, especially with the marble, you, you're not, you're kind of targeting a zone almost, not a specific planet. And they're so close to each other that I have a hard time getting it to go where I want it to go. And then we're gonna to come to the die. So you're gonna launch a die. You can roll it, you can flick it. Um, the problem is, swing-wise, is whatever it lands on, it's gonna be the face of the die times whatever the point value is. So if I get, you know, if I land on the plus five and it just happens to come over, I'm gonna get five. But now I'm going to get 30. Um, so you can roll from 5 to 30. However, my marble is only going to be 5 if it's on a plus 5. And the disc is only going to be the face value, whatever the planet is. And if this 6 lands on a negative 25, I'm 150 points in a hole. I mean, we're talking swingy, super, super swingy. And it's hard to control because they're so close to each other. The dexterity people I play with wouldn't mind the scoring, I think, if you, even with the dice, there's a little bit more control, even though it's crowded. But I think they would want to use multiple dice rather than a marble which rolls around or a disc that flies around or maybe the disc needs to have an ability where if you're shooting the disc it can never go negative and that's the benefit of shooting the disc or maybe the marble does the same thing or maybe if the marble ends up in the black hole it, it can't stay in the black hole um, i even brought up with the designer if they had some areas that had depressions in them the marble would be great because it'd almost be like a gravity well where i could get the marble into an area and it would be easier to capture. It wouldn't roll around quite so randomly. But if you think this is swingy, let me tell you the next part. This area right here, this octagon, is like a bonus galaxy thing. If you land your, any one of your ships, the die or whatever, in that area, you're going to get a bonus round that only you get to partake in. Everybody will go through and score their normal ships, and then you're going to get a bonus round. In this bonus round, you're going to collect all your ships again, but you're also going to get to pick up a 20-sided galaxy die. You're going to use it just like this die. Now, everything in here in a bonus round is positive points. There will be no negatives, so you're not going to have a negative 15. You won't be counting any negatives here at all. So it's real good to be in a bonus round. I don't know why you'd shoot for anything else other than the bonus round. The designer even says that technically, while you're in the bonus round, you could go on perpetually forever and the other players would just have to forfeit. Why? Well, if you remember, in a regular round, if you land in the black hole with any one of your regular uh, ships, you're going to lose it for the next round. Well, in a bonus round, you're going to throw that out. Forget it. It's going to be 180 degrees opposite because now if you get into the black hole, which normally is bad, it's now good. Because if you can get any one of your ships into the black hole, you get another free bonus round. And you're going to score everything. And if you get another one in there again, you're going to get another bonus round. And Groundhog Day again and again and again. Not to mention, you're going to be able to take one of these little rubber rings and you're going to be able to place it on one of these marbles. See if it'll show up here. It's kind of like giving it a crown. So you can place it on here and that's going to be worth some bonus points to you at the end of the game, but it's going to do something much more power powerful than that throughout the game. If anyone now lands on that space, someone else green lands on it, you get the points for it. And if you put it on a negative spot, so now it's over here in this negative 15, you score positive points. So you're going to get plus 15, and they're going to get still the negative 15. They don't get anything out of it. 
well, why in the heck wouldn't I put that on every negative? Because it's so random. I'm going to want that no matter what. And then the other thing is it's hard to tell. They should have been colored rings. Now, I know it's probably hard to get, you know, red colored rings, green colored rings. But if you're going to have this rule, you've got to be able to tell, hey, that's my red ring on there. Um, and that's my blue ring over on that planet. <sighs> but as you can tell, this bonus round with a, with a D20, it's only positive. So you can't go negative, you can't go in the hole, but the whole game becomes just getting that. And you can shoot for it right out of your home base. So you're just shooting for these pretty much. I wouldn't even mess with scoring anything else. I'm shooting for that, shooting for that. That's all we want. And it's so hard. The other neighbor across from you can maybe get you out of there, but a lot of times you're shielded. And so it's hard for them to be real defensive. But ignore all this. Who cares? Because you got a negative 20, plus 20, negative 20, plus 20. This is all crap shoot in here. In here, you get to roll a d20. And everything's positive, and you can mark off these other balls. <sighs> we'll talk more about it in the final wrap-up. All right, I'm back. Uh, you've seen some of the problems. I've brought in some of my Jameson's castmates. By the way, go see Scotch Test Dummies if you want to see a review of it. I think this game... If you're gonna enjoy it, you're gonna like it with some buddies over and a little bit of single malt or a little bit of Irish blended whiskey, all right? Um, it's self-published, I can trash this. I can just attack it. I've talked to the designer a couple times, I asked him a few questions, clarified a few of the rules. It's a one sheet rule set, but I made sure I understood it all right. Nice guy, labor of love or gal, could be a gal, I don't know. Um, labor of love, and again, it looks visually stunning. Um, Gameplay is just not quite there if you like a dexterity game. It's built as a dexterity game with luck and skill. It's a dexterity game with like 90% luck and maybe 10% skill, I think. You know, for me, I already kind of mentioned it, but if you pull some of these blockers off here, I could get my dexterity going a little bit better. And it's so hard to control the marble. Um, that's why I mentioned that if it was possible to have a depressed area or something that maybe like a gravitational sink or something that would get that marble to pull in and then I could when I'm aiming for a region I can kind of get the marble in there you know or boy that dice is just the dice in here is so much more powerful than the other ones uh, again I believe there's a game in here somewhere I just the, the luck factor here is so big that a, a dexterity game has to have some luck, but I believe the luck's got to be, you got to be able to mitigate some of the luck most of the time if you put in the practice with a dexterity game. And there's so many blockers in here. And then the bonus round is just so swingy. Um, but if you like all that and you like the presentation, give them a shot. I mean, it's 25 bucks. It's 25 bucks. I don't know how they're putting out for 25 bucks. I really don't. That's why I'm saying it's a labor of love. And if any of you guys want to go out and, I don't know if they want ideas, but go to their, their page on The Geek and throw some stuff in on the forum. I gave them what I thought would be a couple ideas, but I also told them, hey, I'm not the designer. You can do whatever you want. So, um, Universe, or on BGG, I think it's The Universe. Again, visually stunning. <sighs> Play-wise, not so much. Chief, bonding with board games. See ya. Mm -hmm.